a boss, vlog like a boss, you vlog like a boss, vlog like a boss, you vlog like a boss, vlog like a boss, you you can vlog like me too, cause it's easy. Let's do it. Good morning, good life. I am so not feeling myself today. The worse you feel, the longer your lashes. We're trying to just cover it all up. It has been a really productive first part of the week, really like the first full week of the year. The thing I'm focused on the most is just keeping all of my habits in place. As I said, I was gonna do in one of my last videos, it's going really well. My meditation practice has really been kicked into gear. I am four days in a row strong. I did it a few, obviously, more times um, before that, but I wasn't quite nailing it every single day, and that's one thing I know I'm getting better at, but only if I don't skip a day. So that, to me, has been going well. Morning pages, oh my god, this is so funny. Morning pages have been good as well. And uh, I actually had to remember a phone conversation I had with somebody last year, early October. I couldn't find the notes that I took on that thing, but I went back to my morning pages from the morning after I had that phone call and I was actually able to find the notes, kind of, because it was me like brain dumping. Okay, so if you don't know what morning pages is, you probably do if you've been hanging out with me for a while. It's essentially just free flowing whatever your mind is thinking, write it down for three pages. That's what I've been doing every morning. So I had written about that call because I enjoyed it so much and there were so many things I wanted to remember in my morning pages. So, whoo, I'm just feeling very good about morning pages today. I decided to go to my Instagram and ask you for questions to do a Q&A partially because I know you guys have been wanting to do a Q&A for a while and also because I asked you for questions last year and that Q&A never got published. I actually did record it, but I have so many videos I recorded that were supposed to come out during London and I'm just trashing them because they're worthless to me now. I feel like the topics might still be relevant so I might go back and do them again, kind of like I'm doing this, but the reality of the situation is that it feels so inauthentic to publish videos prior to such a crazy life event happening to me. So anyway, um, you never got your Q&A. So you were kind enough to send me new questions for a new Q&A, and so that is what we're gonna do today. Just make sure we're recording here. Oh my gosh. By the way, I'm representing, if you watch Jamie Genevieve on YouTube, if you love the Scottish YouTubers, I, I feel like I could literally understand people if I go to Scotland now because I watch her YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm repping her Tired Girl Club. Tired Girl Club or Girls Club? Tired Girl Club shirt, which is my new favorite. I don't like that the sleeves have already stretched out, but that's because I pull them up all the time. So there you go. I always feel like I need to look at things chronologically. Like whoever asked the question first, I feel like should get it. But there's a lot of questions. I don't know if this is unbelievable. You guys really step up when I ask you for questions. I'm gonna skip around. Can't get to everybody because you guys would be here all week. But I'm gonna pick out some good ones. <clears throat> also, I am not going to be able to share who asked the questions because I wanna get to as many as possible. So apologies in advance for that. I'm going to do a quick Twitter shout out first though. First, before we dive in, I wanna give a quick Twitter shout out. This goes to somebody who retweeted my last video. I have been giving out Twitter shout outs to those people who follow me on Twitter and retweet the video. And this one goes to Leah Murray. Leah, thank you so much for engaging with me on Twitter for your attention and most of all, for retweeting my last video when it came out. I appreciate your support so much. If you would like the next Twitter shout out in my next video, I think it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. You follow me. You see the video came out, you retweet it. You watch it, definitely. That's the top priority. But you retweet it, you might get a Twitter shout out. So, all right, the first question is, what steps can I take to find a mentor? 
I actually believe that if you tune into this channel, I could be your mentor or somebody down the street who cares about your career path could be your mentor, but I wouldn't restrict yourself to one or the other. Open yourself up to all the ways that you can be mentored. I personally don't work with somebody one-on-one -on -one, like, can I get your advice on this? I feel I have like a personal board of directors, people that I rely on for business advice, for sales advice, for YouTube advice, for relationship advice, for family advice, for all kinds of different advice. And so I go to those people and I get that energy from them. I get that advice from them, but it doesn't always mean that they're talking directly to me. They could be sharing a YouTube video on their channel. They could be publishing a podcast. And that advice and that information in my ears and me absorbing that is very similar to mentorship. I believe that somebody bestowing on you this whole responsibility of becoming your mentor it's, it actually kind of freaks me out a little bit. I know it's probably better for other people, but I think it makes more sense for everyone to make the most out of everyone's time and for you to get the information that's right for you at the time of your learning. And if you're really serious about something, then go absorb as much information as possible. You can read books and those authors can be your mentors. So don't hold yourself back by saying, I have to go get some professor to do it. I have to go get some expert to do it. I have to get some blogger to do it. I have to get some person that's super much smarter than me to, no. You don't have to get them to do anything. You just have to find the outlet where they're, they're sharing their information, their value, and absorb it and take it seriously and then do something about it. That to me is great menteeship, is when you actually do the thing you've been advised to do by somebody that's a lot smarter than you in the way that they've just had more experience at this point. What is your favorite workout gear? I actually was thinking about doing a video about this. I'd love your thoughts. Um, I have a couple of favorites, but one in particular, Honestly, I was thinking I was gonna hate it. I was thinking I'm not going to like this company's clothes and I tried it anyway because it was everywhere on the internet and, and in ads and things like that and I actually totally fell in love and that is Fabletics. I love their leggings, I love their sports bras and that's pretty much all I work out in. I have a couple Lululemon things here and there that I still really like but um, Fabletics has pretty much blown my mind. I thought because it was a celebrity brand that it was gonna be crap that's what I love about this day and age. You can't just still, like put your name on something and have it be crap and it still be successful because your name's on it. Things actually have to be very good at this stage of the uh, e-commerce world or economy or whatever. So um, anyway, that's what I'm loving for workout gear right now. So if you want more details on sort of like workout routines, workout gear, workout that whole mindset that I have, especially at the beginning of the year when you know my game is on point. <laughs> Let me know if you want a video on that. Mm. What was your favorite subject in high school? What was your least favorite subject in high school? Um, mm, on the topic of working out, I think my least favorite would be anything pertaining to physical activity. Uh, maybe. Um, I definitely had a hard time with math and sciences. I picked up on certain maths, like algebra was a lot easier for me than like geometry. Um, but science was a total crapshoot for me. I just could not even. I really enjoyed history, but if I had to pick a favorite subject, it was Spanish. I took Spanish for seven years. I regretfully am not fluent. I feel that's a missed opportunity. <laughs> I need to get back into that, I think, but now the priority is kind of Italian. I don't know if you've heard, um, but um, yeah, Spanish was definitely my favorite. I loved it. Spanish 3 was so hard though. Oh my god, my teacher was from Venezuela. It got real. Got real. Do you get dressed when you work from home? It depends. I'm gonna be honest, I try to leverage um, comfy, no makeup days as much as possible. Uh, I, I blame it on the fact that I like to take care of my skin so I don't wanna put uh, poor clogging makeup on every single day. But then when I have meetings or I'm having a filming day, I batch my filming days, uh, I have to get dressed. At least from the waist up. <laughs> But that has a lot to do with the fact that I am batching my schedule so that it's not like, oh, I have to throw makeup on for some random video interview that I'm doing um, today that doesn't align with anything else on my schedule. Batching those things that I have to get dressed and get pretty for, um, it, it's important. Do you have any project planning, brainstorming, goal setting tools that you use? I think there's a lot happening in that question. Very quickly, um, between me and my assistant, we use Trello to manage 
projects that I'm working on, like what video is coming, what am I gonna make it about, all those kinds of things. For brainstorming and more goal setting, that's what I'm using my bullet journal for. I really like to write things down. The more I allow myself to be okay with that, the better I get at it. I actually kind of suck at the digital organization side of things because I easily forget things. So I have found that if I write things down, I'm much more likely to keep it in my head longer. <laughs> um, so we use Trello for sort of like intercommunication management, um, but if I'm really um, brainstorming around something or trying to remember to do something, I sort of have like my little tasks and priority lists in my bullet journal. Definitely still thinking about a bullet journal video because I know you guys Thought that was a good idea so that may be coming do you take naps and if so how does one properly take naps i do not have the answer that to this I, I i wish i took naps because i'm finding that as lucy gets older i'm not sleeping as well as i used to not because i can't sleep as well i I can sleep like a champion. She's waking me up about five to six hours in, so I'm not getting my full seven to eight. So I should be napping, but I'm not. So I don't have any advice on this because I actually find that it's it's hard enough for me to stop in the afternoon and like read a book for half an hour. I can't even imagine taking a nap because I just have so much I want to do and get done and keep keep going, keep going, keep going. I would much rather go to bed at 8.30, 9 o'clock then take a nap. Have you always been like this or did you learn these productive traits? I think it's a little bit of both. I think that there is something just wired within me to care about productivity and wanting to be more efficient. I actually was thinking about this this, this morning before I even read this question. I was like, I remember days in like my early 20s when I was first living on my own. Now, I moved out of my parents' house when I was 18. So I was in the workforce. I was going to college at the same time. I was doing all this stuff. And I just remember waking up early just because I wanted to, just because I needed the time to focus. And I remember trying to optimize even at those points in time. So because I think that's wired in me, I think that's what causes me to be more interested in getting better and optimizing and saying this works, this doesn't, but it, that's for me, it might be different for you. I love researching that whole concept of productivity. I love this question. When you feel like you're stuck in molasses, what do you do to unstick yourself? If you don't know what this refers to, this is from the first episode of Detail Therapy, my podcast, where I interviewed Leah Pipes. And Leah was explaining depression and what depression feels like because I was trying to understand because I cannot say with certainty that I have come to that full state of mind before. There have been depressions um, in my mindset, but I can't say that I, I was in a depression. So anyway, so she was trying to explain what that's like. And it's like you're in molasses and it's just pulling you back and you're trying to get out of it and pulling you back. So with that being said, I don't know if I've ever been in the worst vat of molasses before, but what I know is that when I'm not feeling the most like myself, when I am not at my highest productivity, when I am not feeling like I am doing as much as I could and that is how I feel value within myself like just straight up like if I don't deliver I feel like I'm not bringing value to anybody um, and so I guess you can take that for whatever the heck that means but I guess when I feel like I'm stuck in molasses I know that if I do something that is normal to me if I do something that is productive just one thing at a time even just one minute at a time I will be one step further out of this molasses and hopefully one step further where it is not stronger than me pulling me back. The short answer to this is I keep very busy. It's I think it's really hard for me to get into a too deep of a crappy mindset because I'm mostly healthy. I don't get sick very often. I'm not laying around. I might have one weekend every once in a while where I'm laying around binge watching a TV show, but it's not that often. I work on Sundays. You guys get your videos on Sundays. You know, I'm constantly moving. My husband will even tell you like, hey, sit on the couch and just watch TV with me. And I have to prioritize that because otherwise I'd be like wiping down the kitchen and unloading the dishwasher and oh, laundry's not done ever. So like, I just keep myself moving. That is just how I do it. I think, the other piece of that is the emotional side of it. And if I feel like I'm in a negative space and just not feeling good about myself space, then I need to start surrounding myself with people who are gonna help me get past that. And that thing that I'll do is just pop in positive podcasts. I've talked about this in the past. Oprah Super Soul Conversations is a fantastic way to get out of a negative mindset because no matter who you're hearing from, no matter what you believe in religion or spirituality or whatever, they talk about things so objectively 
to just get to a happier state or a more meditative or present state. And that allows me to step away from my ego and go like, what are you really upset about? The hardest thing I've ever had to go through was my brother passing away at the end of last year. And the really difficult thing about that for me was grappling with those emotions, but also being wired to keep moving. And what I was happy to find out about myself is that I still had the ability to keep moving. Um, I can criticize myself emotionally about that all day long, but I don't really want to. <laughs> like, I just, I would rather like be considered a jerk for trying to get past something that is really difficult to get past than to make myself feel like crap all the time. I just like don't enjoy it. So sorry, I'm emotional now because I'm talking about my brother, but it's like, I, I just know that I'll be okay if I just keep moving. So I just keep moving because that might be out of the comfort zone for most. Um, I figured it out and I just kept doing it and now it is my comfort zone. So arguably like you could, you could say I should stop and just like think for a minute and that would be out of my comfort zone now where most people are kind of like sit and they feel paralyzed and they can't really keep going. Um, I think we've just flip flopped comfort zones. Um, Fortunately, my comfort zone keeps me on the positive end of things if I work hard enough at it, so. Okay, I got a question about my morning pages process. This is good because it's very quick and easy. Um, I sit down at my desk every morning after I have done my skincare, gotten my lemon water just like poured and ready, and I'm doing my five minute journal first now because it sort of like gets the mind moving on like the quick answers of things because it's just fill in the blank. So I'm starting with that and then I pick up this notebook here and this is my designated morning pages book. So I pick this up, pick up my pen, I look at the date, I open up to the next free page and I write the date and the time at the top. And then I write for three pages straight. Ideally, it's not with any pauses um, or interruptions, which is why I try to wake up early before there are any interruptions like that to do this. Um, sometimes Lucy will wake up in the middle and I have to go take her outside or something and I come right back and I just keep going. Three pages and then I sign it at the end and that's it. I'm really just doing it to get everything out of my brain as much as possible so that I can then sit down and meditate and ideally not have a million things floating around while I'm trying to stop thinking while I meditate. <laughs> like, that's a big helper. The Morning Pages is helping me be able to push um, these, oh, her nails are gonna be tapping all over the place now, but um, it's helping me not have all of those thoughts get in the way when I'm trying to focus on the breath. You are so distracting, you know? Somebody asked, how do you track business versus personal expenses? The really easy answer to this is that business expenses always go on business assets and personal expenses always go on personal. So I have separate credit cards for the business, separate credit cards for me, separate debit, separate debit, separate checking account, separate savings account from all of that. So it's actually really easy and then I use a software called FreshBooks which allows me then to automatically pull in all of those business expenses to my accounting software. It makes it a lot easier for me to track and do accounting at the end of every month. How many times a week would you say is realistic to go to the gym? I mean honestly if you go I think three days a week, you're doing better than most. A lot of people don't even go that much, but that's an overgeneralization. If you ask a trainer, they're gonna be like, you should go five days a week, or I don't know. Like, I think what's realistic is if you've managed your time and you've actually looked at the amount of time that you have in the day and you've actually looked at where the windows of time are for you to be able to go to the gym, then that's how realistic it is. And it also depends on how serious you are about your health. And I've actually gotten to a place where it's easier for me to go to the gym every day. I haven't been yet today, of course. This always happens. I talk about the gym when I haven't been yet that day. <laughs> I'm not feeling good today. But um, I find it's a lot easier for me to go every single day now because I'm not thinking about it as this, I want to get skinny thing. I'm thinking about it as it's my job to live as long as possible and show up to work every day without being really, really sick and without being, um, without having the potential of getting sick in a more um, difficult way because I'm gaining weight or, or I'm, I'm not, my levels aren't right in some way. I'm just finding it's a lot easier to go to the gym every day when I think about how long I wanna live on earth. Like that, that's really what it is. 
it really is what it is now. It's actually also causing me to be more interested in other types of fitness and not just be a cardio bunny because I'm like, okay, I get it. I need muscles to live on earth forever. Okay, fine. What are the last things you focus on at the end of the workday so that the next work morning is super productive? For me, the priority at the end of every day is looking at what didn't get done that was blocked on my calendar because everything should have gotten done if it was blocked on my calendar and i adjust my calendar if things didn't happen accordingly if something was supposed to happen today and there's still time for me to get it done and it wasn't super urgent then it might need to go to the next day or the next day i need to reschedule it so what i typically do is look at did i get everything done and what I didn't get done doesn't need to get rescheduled. And then I'm also looking at what I have blocked out for the, ne the next day, which is stuff I do on a weekly basis. I look at what my priorities are for the week and I block out my time and I've also batched out all the things I have to do every week and I schedule everything. Um, so at the end of every day, it's not like, what do I do tomorrow? It's like, that's already planned what else do you have to add on to tomorrow because you didn't get everything done as much as you thought? If I can look and say like, okay, everything got done, this is great, my schedule tomorrow stays as is, then I just refresh myself on what is coming up so that I can just get into the mindset that I need to be in for the next day. How do you overcome feelings of failure? I, I don't know. <laughs> like This is interesting. I, I mean, like it's not that I don't feel like I'm a failure sometimes or that I have had failures. I have lots of failures all the time. I just don't dwell on them. I it's such a, oh God, that answer is not okay. <laughs> it sucks because it's the actual answer. Like last night, I did not successfully make my sweet potatoes the way I wanted them to. And it turned out it was because I grabbed a sweet potato that was not ideal and so they didn't turn out that great and I was bummed about it because I take my sweet potato preparation very seriously I love it a lot but it was sort of like, okay that's it like it, it wasn't that good so it's like okay well we'll see you again tomorrow like it, it's just a matter of fact if I failed by uploading a video that nobody liked it's just sort of like well the people have spoken we're not doing that in the future like, it's not like oh my god my life is over oh my god my YouTube channel looks so stupid now like I don't care it's I did it I had a reason to do it in the first place there is maybe a percentage of people who liked it maybe not but if it didn't work it didn't work then just don't do it again I, to me it's just all about avo avoiding insanity right like don't keep doing things that don't work and if you find things that do work keep doing those but then like don't be like me and keep doing them so much that you'll forget to try new things sometimes like I need to try new things sometimes because I find things that work and I'm like yeah let's just keep doing this I overcome failure by like I said before, you got to step away from the ego. There's a lot of things I can think of where I was like, oh, that was so embarrassing. Like that's what I'm more likely to feel rather than failure is a little bit of embarrassment, but both suck because it, they both mean that you care too much about like your image than you do your wellness. And so um, I just try not to give myself such a hard time about it because look, here's, here's, okay, here's what you can do. Look at how people are in the news and if they do something super, super, super terrible, they are brought down in the worst way, I think, than we've ever seen in the history of the world, the way the internet is these days, right? They've got a little bit worse, right? Because people aren't going to f let them forget about their failures. But even them, even them, they're yesterday's news. So I always think, well, my failure today is gonna be yesterday's news, soon enough. And even if it's yesterday's news just to me, or yesterday's news just to my family or just to my husband or whatever. Like, it's just yesterday's news. There's always another day. So if even the craziest things that happen in the news become yesterday's news and people can move on with their lives for the most part, um, super unfortunate that some people can't move on with their lives, but, you know, that's why you have to just be careful about the failures that you have and make sure that you continue to move on because nobody else is gonna give you permission to move on, you have to do it. And it's probably gonna be yesterday's news, so who cares? Where do you get the motivation to wake up early? I get the motivation from the fact that I have found purpose in my life. I can genuinely say I know what value I bring to the world and with that, I have a lot of things to do. <laughs> And so the motivation to get up every day is the promise of a new day of me getting to do the thing I love to do and getting it out into the world and it being a better day because I've done that. 
And if I never get out of bed, if I never get up early and optimize my time, if I procrastinate and do something else instead, then I never get to feel the benefit of that. And that sucks. Nobody wants that. How did I get Lucy? I got Lucy. Oh my God. This is kind of like, I was, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell the truth <laughs> because I want you to know, but I'm, I'm, you know, I don't recommend this at all. Uh, <laughs> I was 18 years old. I moved out of my parents' house. I moved into an apartment. I don't know how that apartment allowed me to move in because I totally lied about how much income I had when I moved in. But they let me move in. And I was like, okay, cool. And I paid rent on time, so it worked out fine. You do what you gotta do. But the mistake they made <laughs> was telling me that I could get a dog and that they weren't charging a fee or rent, nothing. They didn't charge anything. No fees, no deposits, no rents for a pet. And I was like, well, I'm gonna go get a dog because my parents never let me have a dog. So I looked up a breeder online and I bought Lucy. Like that's the story. It's not pretty. It's not like we ran into each other at the shelter and she was abused or whatever. Like, no, I got an eight week old beagle puppy when I was 18 years old because I'm an idiot, but I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> she has taught me a few things about how to be an adult in my life. Um, and I don't think if not for that responsibility, for having that responsibility for now going on 15 years, um, I would be where I am today. I really don't. She taught me how to parent and I'm not even a parent. So, I mean, I get it. It's not the same thing as parenting, but come on. Don't, 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 don't rag on me for that one. Somebody asked, would you ever do Amy TV merch? I would love to do merch. Oh, is that so funny? I'm wearing somebody's merch today. I didn't even mean to do that. I want to do Amy TV merch. It's something I've given thought to in the last six months, but that's as far as I've gotten. I'm just trying to look around right now for businesses and brands and merch companies that I can trust that I think would put out a good product. And I'm thinking about a couple of different, I can think of that, that, that and that. I can think of four things that I could turn into merch right now that I think would be so fun for us to be able to like do together, but um, I have to find the right company to work with. So yeah, I have thought about it, not doing it yet. If you know a merch company that would has excellent products and would wanna work with me, then please let them reach out. Um, but I, I, I have to nail down a few things before we're ready for that stage. But I'm not going to procrastinate on it because I think it's a great idea. What advice do you have for someone starting a career as an author, artist, or speaker? Um, all of those things and pretty much anything anyone wants to do that's watching this channel has to do with creation and it has to do with having an opinion and it has to do with putting yourself out there. And so I would say do all of those things on a regular basis every single day, practice even if it's hard, make the thing that you love a job and show up every single day and not just when you feel like creating and then you'll get paid a lot of money to do it. Um, when I became a speaker, it was because I walked on any stage that would have me for a couple of years and I would even pay money to go speak somewhere. And because of that experience, now I get paid five figures to walk on stage. Like that's just how that works. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of putting it up first. And then you have to prove to others that you can do it. It was a thousand videos before I could probably even hit a hundred thousand subscribers. You know, it was, um, a lot of, I, I started writing my book and then I failed and then I had to start writing it again and then it finally got done. Becoming an author took a lot of work too. So you have to just keep going. You have to keep doing everything on a regular basis. You have to practice. And I think a lot of people want to romanticize what they do and not practice and you're gonna lose. Do you still use time blocking to organize your day? Yes, I do. Um, and now my schedule has gotten to be so I, I, I'm not, I'm not doing the same thing every day. Um, I, I still travel. I still have like a lot of variables that come into play. I'm still helping to run after Mark. So that's a, something that's um, different all the time, but a lot of things in my schedule are the same. A lot of the time I'm making two videos a week. I'm making a podcast every week. I'm doing interviews. I'm doing uh, consult calls. I'm mentoring people. Like there are things happening every single week. So with the time blocking is coming is batching. So there's batching tasks that happen all the time. And so I have to make sure that I always make time for them. And then they're scheduling things in and blocking out time for the other stuff. So if someone's like, let's go to lunch. Great. I can't put that on a day that I'm usually filming because I didn't write down that I was filming that day. So my priority is to put everything that I have batched 
on the calendar and then other things can come into play. I have done a time blocking video, so you can go and look at that. But on the specific topic of batching, we might need to go to a deeper level with that. So if you have interest in a batching video and what that means, um, then let me know. But there's definitely a lot of batching techniques in that time blocking video, so I'm not 100% if we need to do it. What kind of music do you listen to in order to focus? Um, I've been really into the brain food playlist lately on Spotify. I go into the whole focus menu in Spotify and I just like to choose what I'm thinking. I'm usually into like jazz or like beats, like something that kind of like keeps me moving um, and, and allows me to work, but the br it, a really good one is the brain food playlist. I definitely recommend that. If I only have a handful of content ideas, does that mean I'm probably not cut out for YouTube? No, I don't I don't think so at all. I think if you were asking YouTube, they would say that if you have an idea, then you should probably have four or five episodes about that idea planned at minimum because you want to make sure you have something sustainable. It's going to take a while for something to take off in order for you to sustain a great channel. So with that being the case, um, you want to make sure you have that. But if you don't have much beyond that, that's okay. You want to be able to execute and learn from the audience. And it's going to be really hard to get an audience right away. But you want to execute and, and create the videos, find out how long they take you, find out if you love them, find out if there's another way you can do something, and just find out how you can go deeper on different topics. One video might spur an idea for another one. Especially, that's what the comments are for. I love to look at the comments. I need you guys to tell me what we should do more of. So that's why I think you don't necessarily have to have a thousand ideas in order to have a YouTube channel, or even ten. If you have four or five or six episodes planned around some similar topic that you want to become known for, then start with that and then get the opinions of your audience. Make sure you're sharing those videos and getting views so that you can ask for feedback and then use that feedback to decide what to do next. If you ever want video advice from me, this is kind of a plug, but it's also just like straight up real advice. I wrote a book about it, Vlog Like a Boss, How to Kill It Online with Video Blogging. So that's a great place to start. That's a lot cheaper um, than anything else that I have to offer. There's a book that you can get on paperback on Amazon. You can get the audiobook, which I read, so you can hear more of my voice. <laughs> um, and uh, hard copy, like anything you want. Then there's also vlogbossuniversity.com, and that is my course. So that takes you even deeper on the side of like what you would learn in the book, but you know, it's video, so we have to have visuals, which is what I love about the course editing advice and on-camera advice and planning out your ideas. So if you're ever like, I want to go to the next level with this, go to those resources and you'll be getting it from me. Like I made that stuff and that's all the stuff I believe. Do you guys want to have kids? Good question. <laughs> um, Vin and I have talked about having kids many times and we still think about it and we talk about it. We actually talk about names. We totally do, but we are not there yet. We're actually really enjoying being married for less than two years. <laughs> so I feel like it's like still pretty safe for us to just talk about it and continue to learn more about each other so that we could be good parents someday. But today is not the day. Oh, I'm going to finish with this question because I love it and I'm going to turn it back on you. <laughs> uh, shout out to little one XX for asking this. Would you ever write a second book? And if so, what would it be about? I have been thinking about this. I feel that I'm ready to write a second book. I would really love to do that because I feel like we have talked about a lot of things since Vlog Like a Boss launched that are fodder for a new book with this whole conversation around efficiency, productivity, etc. So my question to you is, if I wrote a second book, what would it be about that would make you want to buy it? Because why would I write a book about something you're not going to buy? Like, <laughs> that's what I want to know. I want to know in the comments below, this is your call to action for the day, your cue, I need the A, what book would you buy from me? Because I am curious to hear how you have interpreted what we've talked about here on the channel for the last year or so, and um, how you would want to go deeper on that particular topic. So share that with me below. Oh gosh, you guys have a lot of comments to give me today. So I'm excited to see what they say. Thank you for dealing with my, I didn't get ready to see you situation. <laughs> uh, and for tuning in, I appreciate it as always. Make sure you subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love. And remember, go after the life that you want. Cheers.